Okay, so let's talk about gases. And the first place to start is some of the properties of gases. And I'll try to hit on at least a couple of the most important properties to talk about uh, once we get going. There's some assumptions that we need to make in terms of understanding how gases behave, and they kind of go like this. Uh, the first uh, general assumption is usually that gas particles are really, really small, uh, and compared to the entire container that they're in, uh, their volume is negligible. So if I somehow manage to make all the gases in a uh, jar, all the particles settle to the bottom of the jar, uh, there would probably be fewer uh, particles uh, than would cover the head of a pin. So that's how few of the particles there are actually in uh, the air or any gas that's around us. Okay, uh, these gas particles exert pressure by uh, their motion. So the, these particles are assumed to be in constant, random, straight line motion. So they move in a straight line until they hit something, and they bounce right back uh, in another straight line. There's no attraction between gas particles. So if these two, if gas particles bump into one another, they don't stick together. Uh, if they did, then we'd be talking about a liquid. So there's a fine line between gases and liquids. So if we don't have enough kinetic energy to overcome the attractions between the particles, then we end up with a, a liquid or maybe even a solid. But as long as we have greater kinetic energy than the attractions, then uh, we are dealing with a, a gas. And I talked about uh, these particles moving in uh, constant uh, straight line motion. Uh, and when they have collision, the collision, collision is uh, completely elastic. That is that if it hits the side of the container at 100 miles an hour, it's going to bounce right back and still be moving at 100 miles an hour. So it doesn't lose any energy in the collision. And uh, probably one of the, the neatest ones, I think, is that the average kinetic energy is proportional to the absolute temperature. So for all uh, substances, this is true. Uh, if, unless, or if this wasn't true, uh, we'd need a thermometer for every substance that we dealt with. But as it turns out, a thermometer is just a, really a kinetic energy meter. So all gases that are at the same temperature have exactly the same kinetic energy. Okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, the temperature scale first. So one thing to remember is you need to use the Kelvin temperature scale for gas calculations. So make sure that you are always uh, using Kelvin temperature during, during this unit. Uh, I've found in the past that uh, there is always one student who uh, forgets to convert all the Celsius temperatures to Kelvin temperature on the upcoming exam and they end up losing five or ten points just one point at a time for not converting to Kelvin. So, you know, stick your hand over your heart and pledge uh, that you will use Calvin uh, for the remainder of this unit. So, and I want to emphasize, uh, or you will die. Of course, I'm just kidding. Uh, you won't die if you don't use it, but uh, sometimes it will feel worse than dying when you look at your exam and notice that you've missed 10 points just because you forgot to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. So here are some uh, common temperatures that we deal with. Uh, standard temperature is considered to be zero degrees Celsius for some reason. Somebody just you know put their foot down and said uh, zero degrees Celsius is going to be considered standard temperature. So that uh, equates to 273 Kelvin. Uh, common temperatures that are around about room temperature are 20 and 25 degrees Celsius that correspond to 293 and 298 Kelvin. And quite often we're dealing with water uh, boiling or near its boiling point, so we would be at 100 degrees Celsius there, and that would correspond to 373 Kelvin. Pressure is measured generally with a barometer, and uh, a barometer is basically an inverted test tube that's uh, placed upside down into a pan of mercury, so it's filled with mercury and then turned upside down. Uh, this is like the trick that maybe you did as a child where you took a soda bottle, filled it with water, and if you inverted it while it was under uh, the surface of the water and kept the 
uh, opening uh, submerged, the water would stay in uh, the soda bottle while it was upside down. Uh, the same thing is happening with mercury, but mercury is much more dense uh, and you can't support as high of a column of, of mercury in an inverted container. Uh, but generally it's going to be uh, able to support uh, at one standard atmosphere. So here is a standard pressure. One atmosphere of pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. So in a barometer, uh, it would uh, support one uh, atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury. So we can use that as a conversion factor. So some problems will give you your pressure in atmospheres. Uh, other problems will give it to you in millimeters of mercury, or sometimes they'll even use a strange unit called a tor, and one tor is equal to one millimeter of mercury, so one standard atmosphere would be 760 tor. So those are some of our conversion factors that we can use. Okay, so we can do these uh, very simply. So if I have any pressure that's in a unit that I don't want, I can convert to uh, the units that I do want. So I've got a couple of uh, beginning ones here. Uh, I've got just arbitrarily 2,750 tor and I want to figure out how many atmospheres that is. So I just plug it in in a factor label type of calculation where uh, I start with the measured quantity and then my conversion factor has to reflect the units that I want to get rid of in the denominator and the units that I want to uh, remain uh, in the numerator. So this looks like, according to my calculations, it corresponds to 3.62 atmospheres. And then likewise, sometimes we want to convert back to atmospheres or from atmospheres into millimeters of mercury. So I made up a really small number here, uh, 2.31 times 10 to the minus third atmospheres. And I want to convert that to millimeters of mercury. So I've got my atmospheres on the top. I want to get rid of those so they're on the bottom in the next cell. I want millimeters of mercury, so they're going to be on the top. And I just multiply through the top, divide by the bottom. And I got 1.76 millimeters of mercury, so not very much pressure there. And then lastly, I've got a temperature conversion. So I've got 50 degrees Celsius, and I want to know how warm that is in uh, Kelvin. So I just add that to 273, or yeah, minus 50 degrees Celsius, I, I should say. Uh, and I want to find out what that is. So I add that to 273 and I get 223 Kelvin. I think that's about it here. Uh, so the units you have to pay attention to, uh, if in doubt, always use atmospheres. You'll, you'll generally be right, but always use Kelvin. Uh, the volume units uh, are typically not going to be as important, but uh, if you're ever nervous about what units to use, I would say use liters.